Hello everyone, my name is Wayne Liu and I'm a technical lead manager for Android Developer Relations. Today, I'm going to talk about Google for Games Android Game Development Kit. Um, we are taking some questions in this Q&A video and I'll be answering all your top questions regarding the Android Game Development Kit. Without further ado, let's move on to the questions. So for question number one, is there any specific advice or use cases for early rising game developers on how to use these tools? So the answer is for game developers with a small team size, we are working with popular game engines for you to integrate your libraries. You can find out more on our website for developers.android.com slash games. This will allow you to focus on building gameplay instead of the entire technology stack. On the other hand, if you are using Unreal Engine and you are targeting multiple platforms, such as PC or for consoles, the Android Game Development Extension, the AGDE, may be a great addition to your workflow. On, um, on the other hand, alternatively, if you have more resources and want to have full control to optimize performance and customize your game, you should look at our documentation on developing and customizing your own game engine. Lastly, for tools, you should use the Android Studio Profiler to inspect your game, the Android GPU Inspector, otherwise known as the AGI, to profile graphics across different GPUs, and the Android Performance Tuner to optimize frame rates and loading times. For question number two, when signing up for the Android Game Development Extension, HDE for Visual Studio, is Android Studio a requirement? The answer is no. AGDE for Visual Studio works independently without developers needing to download and install Android Studio. Note that, however, you will still need to download the Android SDK and the NDK. You can find out more information about the prerequisites for the AGDE in the link below. For question number three, can you elaborate more about the process and the different tools on how AGDK can be incorporated with Unity. So, HDK consists of multiple game libraries. For example, the game activity, game controller, game text input, OBOE audio library, frame pacing, and Android performance tuner. These different game libraries allow you to build or customize your game engine in C or C++. When you talk about Unity, it does many of the above in C Sharp. However, for additional functionality, you will need to download separate Unity plugins or otherwise known as packages, such as the Play Asset Delivery and Android Performance Tuner. Please refer to our Unity documentation for more details. Question number four. For those who are developing for Android versions before Android 12, how can the updated game library be best applied? So to clarify on this, only the game mode API and interventions require Android 12. Um, when we talk about Android 12, this is equivalent to the Android SDK version of level 31. For many of the game AGDK game libraries, these do not require Android 12 or the SDK version of 31. Um, many libraries require a minimum version and SDK version of 16 and MDK version of 17. These libraries include game activity, game controller, game text input, and the OBOE audio framework. There are two libraries uh, which require a minimum SDK version of 14 and MDK version of 14. These are the Android Performance Tuner and the Frame Pacing Library. This is rather complicated. So for more information, you can find this in a table format in our AGDK download page. For question number five, when developing Android games in the C++ environment, how do we check memory access similar to how you do it in Windows development environment? So firstly, there's a couple of differences between Windows development and Android native game development. The Android OS uses on-trim memory to warn developers about low memory usage. Secondly, when you're budgeting for memory in Android, you need to take note of multiple factors, such as the size of the physical RAM, the maximum VRAM on the device, the memory usage of the Android OS, and the memory usage of all the installed apps. Thirdly, 
you need to avoid memory trashing. This is a scenario which occurs on Android devices when there's very low but insufficient memory to actually kill the game. You will need to mem manage memory efficiently to avoid reaching this stage of memory trashing. Lastly, you can use our tools such as the Android Profiler to inspect your memory usage. For all this, for all this and more, please refer to our documentation for more details and for links to the tools as well to help you manage your memory efficiently. Moving on to question number six. When a crash occurs in Android, is there a way to collect and recreate the stack trace in Visual Studio? Yes, there's basically two different methods to follow depending on whether the crash occurs in Java or in C++ code. When the crash occurs in Java, you can see the stack trace in the Play Console report or on a local device, you can see it in the Logcat tool. This stack trace will allow you to look at the core stack um, and look at the class, the method, the file, or even the line number for you to manually trace this within Visual Studio. When the crash occurs in C++ code, there's a few ways to debug this. Well, for remote crashes, you can generate a native debug symbols file and upload this to the Google Play Console. And we will be obfuscate the crash for you. For local crashes, you can use our Android game development extension for Visual Studio to debug your code with LLDB. Alternatively, you can use the MDK stack tool to symbolize the stack trace. On to question number seven, how do I use shaders on Android? Is there any documentation that's official related to this? Yes, Android games use OpenGL ES or Falcon for rendering. These are offered by these are technologies offered by the Kronos Group. Um, you can find our documentation on OpenGL or Vulkan for more information. We also provide different tools for you to profile and visualize your GPU rendering on Android. Again, the link is below for you to refer and to look at all the detailed information on this. Question number eight, how do I use Vulkan Graphics API on Android? We have many different documentation for you to set up your Vulkan graphics on Android. We have samples to guide you on basic rendering, drawing a cube, compiling shaders, um, setting up validation layers, white color support, and best practices for Vulkan. Please refer to the documentation to learn more about these different samples uh, and use cases. The last question. Is there any official forum or community where developers can meet and discuss, share feedback on these libraries and tools? Basically, there is no, while there is no official forum or community, but developers can report bugs and submit your feedback in the link below. So we have reached the end of our session. Thank you for joining us today for our top questions on Android Game Development Kit. My name is Wayne Liu technical lead manager in Android developer relations. I hope that this session has been useful in answering your questions. And I'm looking forward to see you launch many fun and exciting games on Android and the Google Play Store. Thank you.